In today's talk, I'd like to introduce Phi's lab-based scanning XPS and HaxPES instrument, the Quantes, and give an overview of its capabilities and applications. To start with an introduction to HaxPES, or hard X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, let's compare it to traditional XPS. In both cases, we are irradiating a sample with X-rays and measuring the kinetic energy of the electrons emitted from the surface. We can use that information to determine the elements and chemical environment in the analysis area. The main difference is that in traditional XPS, we use a soft X-ray source, whereas in HaxPES, we use hard X-rays at higher photon energies, and this has several major advantages. First, the information depth of these techniques is related to the inel inelastic mean-free path of the photoelectrons, and so for HaxPES, we can detect electrons from deeper in the sample, up to three to five times greater than traditional XPS. This extends the thickness range of films or interfaces that can be analyzed, reduces the effect of surface contamination in our analysis, and reduces the effect of sample damage during sputter depth profiles. Next, we can use HaxPES to shift Auger peaks that might overlap with our photoelectron peaks of interest. Lastly, with HaxPES, we can analyze photoelectron and Auger transitions that are not available with a soft X-ray source, giving us more possibilities for determining chemical environments and relative depth information. We'll have some more examples later in the talk. A HaxPES is not new and has perf been performed at synchrotrons for many years. These light sources have the advantage of tunable photon energies and very high flux, but there are several drawbacks. Time on a beamline is competitive and requires a lot of preparation for a successful experiment. Charge neutralization and quantification are also difficult, limiting the types of experiments a user can perform. Therefore, a lab-based HaxPES instrument can provide users a more accessible system that is easy to use and highly automated with features commonly found in current XPS instruments such as charge neutralization, imaging, and depth profiling. Choosing the best photon source for HaxPES is a balance of information depth, photoelectron cross-section, and additional transitions gained. 5 to 7 keV has been found to be an optimal choice. So based on the established Quantera 2 XPS platform, Phi and Olvac Phi have developed the Quantes, a lab-based XPS HaxPES instrument which contains two X-ray sources, monochromatic aluminum for traditional XPS and monochromatic chromium for HaxPES analysis. At 5.4 keV, chromium X-rays provide for depth of analysis roughly three times that of aluminum X-rays. The Quantes has all the features of the Quantera 2, such as automated sample transfer, a scanning X-ray microprobe, and automated charge neutralization. In addition, an optional ion gun is available with monatomic and argon gas cluster capabilities for profiling polymers and organic materials. Now we'll look at some of the HaxPES capabilities of the Quantes. In this example, we are analyzing a single solder ball using a 20 micron diameter X-ray beam. Scanning X-ray imaging, or SXI, was used to locate the ball and select the analysis point in the center of the ball. With aluminum XPS, we detect tin and see mainly oxide-like chemistry. Performing chromium HaxPES on the same location, we detect a higher degree of the underlying metal, which is consistent with the formation of surface oxides on the solder ball. We also show good spatial resolution with the microprobe and the ability to choose specific locations on and off the ball for analysis with the use of SXI. For the next example, we have a multi-layer film of yttrium oxide on metallic chromium and titanium layers. We would like to analyze this with XPS, as previous analyses suggest an oxidized layer at the buried interface of the amorphous YOX and the chromium. Due to the thickness of the top layer, we cannot detect the interface with XPS even at a normal takeoff angle. However, we can see all the way to the titanium layer using HaxPES at normal takeoff. From the yttrium analysis, there appears to be only one oxidation state. On the other hand, chromium appears to be partially oxidized. We can use angle-dependent HaxPES measurements to learn more about the oxidation in the chromium layer. At a grazing takeoff angle of 30 degrees, there is a higher relative ratio of the chromium 5 plus and 6 plus states to the metal compared to the normal angle, suggesting the higher oxides are enhanced near the top of the chromium layer. And in this case, it was useful that this analysis could be performed without the need for sputterings of the sample to reach the buried interface. A common feature in XPS spectra for samples handled in air are adventitious carbon and oxygen. As shown on this steel sample, they can make up a significant portion of the analysis volume and attenuate your peaks of interest. With the increased depth of analysis in HaxPES, 
Surface contamination makes up a smaller fraction of the detected signal and reduces the need for surface cleaning that could potentially damage the surface. Up to now, we have shown the advantages of HackSpec for looking deeper into samples as received. However, sometimes the layer or interface is below even what we can see with HackSpec. In that case, we can still use ion sputtering to thin or remove top layers. This usually creates a damaged surface layer that is on the same order of thickness as the XPS analysis depth, and so by the time we can detect the buried interface, the chemistry is already disrupted. However, with HackSpec, we can detect beyond the damage depth and analyze interfaces in a more pristine state. As shown here, we would like to analyze the Platinum TiO2 interface, but the top Platinum layer is too thick. Using a 500 EV argon beam, we can sputter toward the interface. With XPS, by the time we detect titanium, we see chemical reduction due to the ion beam. However, with HackSpec, we can detect the titanium with a thicker remaining top layer, and so the interface TiO2 chemistry is preserved. And this is a major advantage of using HackSpec for depth profiling. Other features of HackSpec include the ability to shift OJ peaks, since the kinetic energy is independent of the primary X-ray energy. In this example, manganese and nickel OJ peaks overlap the main photoelectron peaks using an aluminum X-ray. But with the chromium X-ray, the OJ peaks are shifted, making the photoelectron peak analysis much more straightforward. HackSpec also provides additional transitions that are not available to XPS and can be used for complementary chemical information. As shown here, the typical XPS survey spectrum is collected from zero up to about 1400 binding energy. With a chromium X-ray, surveys can be collected to over 5000 EV binding energy. This wide energy range allows depth analysis based on chemical states detected at various kinetic energies. The titanium 1S and 2P transitions are about 4,500 EV apart in binding energy and provide depth information over about 20 nanometers. And this table shows the additional core transitions that are available with a chromium X-ray compared to an aluminum X-ray. The 1S transitions of aluminum to titanium are now available along with many others. With all the advantages that HackSpec brings, it is important to be able to quantify your results. There is an ongoing effort to develop relative sensitivity factors for the chromium X-ray source, and PHI has joined IMEC, LETI, and NIMS to experimentally measure these. As of January, PHI has released a beta version database of RSFs for the 33 elements shown here in green, and is currently working on more. The experimental sensitivity factors have shown good quantification results on compounds, as shown here. For these sulfur, aluminum, and silicon-containing compounds, good agreement to theory has been found using the traditional 2S and 2P transitions, as well as the newly accessible 1S transition. We can also model the thickness of layered structures from XPS and HackSpec data using our new program, Stratify. The software is highly flexible for novices and experts and contains tools for batch processing of data used in metrology applications. As seen here, we have a nominally 25 nanometer thick SiO2 layer on silicon. With HackSpec, we can see both the oxide and metal peaks, and the calculated thickness is in good agreement with the expected value. These methods can extend to multi-layered films. In this example, we have a 1 nanometer hafnium oxide layer on silicon with two different thicknesses of a tinitride capping layer. A relative depth plot provides guidance on ordering and contents of each layer, and estimated profiles show good agreement with the expected structure when using traditional silicon 2S and titanium 2P transitions, as well as the higher binding energy 1S transitions. In summary, the Quantes is a robust lab-based instrument for XPS and HackSpec analysis that is highly automated and easy to use. As shown in the previous examples, the increased depth of analysis with HackSpec provides multiple advantages and complements to traditional XPS, which allows you to extend the reach of your surface analysis. Thank you for your attention.